So have you come across a situation where you need to bring in data which is formatted like this? Now this data is beautifully formatted from Excel perspective. This is a financials report for a bike store where we have the April and May, the budget and um, actual and the variance available there. Now this is good when you see it in Excel, but when you really want to use it for analysis within Power BI, this format is quite literally horrible. So how do we take this in within Power Query in Power BI and then transform it into a nicely formatted tabular form? And that's what we're going to learn in this particular video. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Gurpreet. And at BI with Gurpreet, my mission is to help you learn and master business intelligence, especially using the powerful Microsoft tool of Power BI and help you build a career in data analytics and business intelligence. So our data here has a couple of main issues. So one issue is that we have these top rows when we bring it in spreadsheet, we'll see these empty rows there, which we need to get rid of, which is quite straightforward. And then the main issue is these two header rows. So in Power Query, if you have one header row, it's very easy to promote it as the column headers. But if you have more than one rows, which you want to use as headers, then it's a bit challenging. So how do we deal with challenge? And the technique that we're going to learn today, you can apply if you have more than two layers of header rows as well. So it will work with two or more layers of header rows. Also, we can see here, we have these revenues and expenses where we don't have it fully populated for the whole column and all those things as well. So the idea is how do you work with this type of subcategorized data and then transform it into a tabular form. And that's what we're going to do within Power BI. So let's get started and open Power BI. So here we are within Power BI. The first step we need to do is we need to connect with this data. So home ribbon, get data. Our data is in Excel workbook. So we'll click on Excel workbook. I've got my file sitting on my desktop. A link to this exercise file is included in the video description. So you can download it from there and practice along. So let's select it and press open and the navigator window opens and in the navigator window, we can see the spreadsheets available within our Excel workbook. If we had any tables, then we'll also show which it's suggesting there are those two tables, but let's um, look at the raw data. So that's the data that we want to bring in and format, select the raw data worksheet and click transform data. And when we do that power query editor window opens and this is where we will do all the magic. So first things first, look at the applied steps. So what Power Query Editor does is whenever we connect to a data source, it will apply some steps. So source step is always there. Whenever you connect to a new data source, the source step will always be there. Then there is sometimes you will have a navigation because in this case, the source is the Excel file and then we navigate to a particular worksheet. And then we have the promoted headers and change time also applied. So promoted headers is promoting the first row as column headers and the change type is applying some data types to the columns. Now, both of these steps are not relevant at this stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove those steps. So if you are following along, make sure your applied steps window looks like this, where you have source and navigation only those two steps. Okay. Now first here, Look, we have these two rows, row one and two, which have all null values apart from this bikes row financials uh, header here. So we don't have any meaningful information there. So we just want to get rid of those two top rows. So within Power Query, you go to home ribbon and there is this reduce row section where you can remove rows. So you can remove top rows, bottom rows, alternate rows. You can even remove duplicates or blank rows or errors. In our case, we want to remove top rows. When you click on that, a window pops up. And in this window, we have to enter how many rows we want to remove from the top. And in our case, it's two rows. So enter two, press OK. And those two rows are gone now. And applied steps, you can see remove top row step has been applied there. Next, we have in this row one, we have April, 
but it's null here basically and null here. So we want to horizontally fill this value April across this way. And similarly, we want to fill the value for May as well this way. Now, unfortunately within Power Query, there is no option to fill horizontally like this, but there is an option to fill down. So what we want to do is we want to bring this rows into columns and the way to do it is to use the transpose functionality and this is similar to how transpose works within excel as well so we go to transform ribbon and click on transpose and when we do that the rows become columns so you see the first row is the first column now second row is the second column and so on and so forth so now we want to downfill this april and may in here so for that again on the transform ribbon fill down and there we have it april and may fully populated next thing is we want to merge these two columns column one and column two we want to merge them together again power query has an option available for this which is again on the transform ribbon first thing what we have to do is we have to select those two columns the ones we want to merge as soon as we do that we see this merge column option available if suppose you only have one column selected it's grayed out merge column option only is available when you have two or more columns selected so we have our two columns selected and once you have done that then you click on merge columns and then you need to provide a separator if you want if you don't want then you don't but in our case we want to provide a separator so that later on we can separate this out into two separate columns and we want to use a separator which is not used anywhere else in this data set so pick something which is not there in the data set so we're going to use the pipe symbol this symbol is the pipe symbol and the new column or that will be created after merging these columns will be called merged which is fine because it's a temporary name so press ok and there we have it april actual april budget april variance and so on for the may as well okay that's done now now we want to take this first column and make this the first row so again we have to transpose so column to rows or rows to column is always transpose so just click anywhere on the data set and then click on transform ribbon transpose and there you can see our first row now has the column headers apart from the first two columns where we have the pipe symbol we want to replace this pipe symbol in the first column with the value of class and in the second column we will replace it with the value of category okay and there we have it now if you look at this first row it's our header row so now what we want to do is just promote this as the header row and again within power query editor go to home ribbon and say use first row as headers and as soon as we do that you can see we have our headers nicely populated there okay that's good next is if we see the first column the class column we want to populate the revenue downwards and expenses and these two text values downwards so again fill down is the option so click on that first column go to transpose uh, sorry transform and then fill down and there we have it next is we have all these null values now which we don't need these come from the total uh, columns uh, total rows uh, sorry total revenues and total expenses and all those rows which we don't need so go to second column here and uncheck the null option so we don't want that to show the null values and there we have it we have our data almost there all we need to do is now we have this here spread out like this into different columns we want to bring it into two columns where one column will consist of this uh, these column headers and the other column actually will have the values so to do that all we need to do is unpivot this data but the first two columns we don't need to unpivot so those will remain like this only so you select those two columns and then go on transform ribbon and unpivot other columns or you can right click on these columns and say unpivot other columns and as soon as we do that we can see we have four columns of data now which is pretty close to where we want to get to only a couple of things left to do next what we want to do now is this attribute column we want to split it into two separate columns and there is a split option within uh, power query editor so right click here and say split column and by delimiter okay 
The delimiter power query editor does a good job of detecting a delimiter if there is one. In this case, it's picked up that pipe symbol, which is correct. Next is split at, uh, we want to just split at the leftmost delimiter because there's only one parcel anyway. And then we press OK. And there we have two columns now, one column containing the months. Let's rename this. I'm going to double click here and rename it to month. And the second one, we want to double click and change it to measure. So month and measure columns. All okay, great. This is all looking good now. The only thing left is to check the data types. So you remember we originally removed the data type change type step. So we will manually now check and make sure all the data types are correct. So class, category, month, and measure, these four columns, all text values. So this is ABC, so this is the text. So that's correct data type for those columns. The last one is our um, sort of money column or currency column. So in Power BI, in Power Query, you have this fixed decimal number. That's the one you want to use instead of decimal number. So at the moment it's used decimal number. That doesn't tell Power Query that it's currency. So we have to use fixed decimal number. And that's how we tell Power Query this is currency column. And there we go. That data type has been applied now. Maybe lastly, let's change the name of this query because this is how it will load into a model. So the name that we give to query will be the name of the table where the data gets loaded. So in this case, if this is bike store financials. And now let's commit these changes. So home ribbon, close and apply. And all the changes, transformations that we did get applied to the entire data set, which in this case was really small anyway, but what Power Query does is it brings in a well, the first like thousand rows. You do all the transformations there, you create the transformations, and when you commit the changes by pressing close and apply, that's when all the transformations are applied to the entire data set, and that gets brought into Power BI data model. So we can see our data here. Let's go to the data tab here. Uh, which is the second icon on the left hand side and we can see our data nicely formatted so there we go in this video what we did was we imported and this type of subcategorized data where you have more than one header row and then formatted that into a nicely formatted tabular form with these five columns within power bi and it finally looks like this i hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you download the exercise file and practice yourself. If you have any questions regarding what we covered in this video, do leave a comment and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, keep on learning and I'll see you next time.